Andromeda. Not the I am, the amplifier. So Lin Sol was like, hey, have you done the musician? And they list like six items. And I'm like, I've only done the musician Pegasus. And like, cool, we'll send you the Andromeda and all the rest. So I've gotten the Andromeda and then another Pegasus, because there's a Pegasus there. And there's another Pegasus on the shelf there. So I've got fucking R2R Pegasus high. Plural of Pegasus is Pegasi everywhere. This is the one they sent me. It's got hooked up I2S to the um, Pi Hat. Uh, Pi, yeah, Pi Hat. And then I'm running the balanced out into the musician Andromeda, which is a very basic, simple plane. Oh, I'm upsetting people. Amplifier. Um, the only difference is between it's fucking amazing. Like, okay. Capital Audio Fest. <clears throat> you guys probably have seen my video. If you haven't, it's your first time to the channel. Hi, I'm ZS Pintera. I do some shit, and there's waifus. Download them in the description. But it was two days before Capital Audio Fest, and I was bringing a... I was trying to keep it nice and simple, bring a compact amount of stuff to show off in the room. I had that Shanling EM5. I had a couple choice headphones, and I was like, all right, that's it. Just that. And then, like, that's uh, the speaker amp to run the little micas, and he could also use it as a Class A. And I was good. I wasn't going to bring anything else. I was like, pop in a suitcase. It would be great. Then this showed up, and I'm like, I had the, the setup on the table upstairs because I was testing out, you know, just to make sure I had everything I needed. Let me just plug this in, and um, I'm obviously not taking this to Capital Audio Fest. I just want to make sure it works. And then I took it to Capital Audio Fest because I'm like, what is this doing to sound Oh, I am maxed out right uh, by the way right now because we are on single ended. I pull the book down. Something just fell and then it vanished. Just it went and it was gone. Welcome to my life. Uh, 600 ohms unbalanced is only 95 milliwatts. So. Not exactly a powerhouse for single-ended, but that's just single-ended. This is the truest of true balanced amplifiers. The only one more true balanced is the reference because that literally just has XLRs in the front and says plug your headphones into this. And you're like, but wait, there's two XLRs. You can't be more fuck you, I'm balanced than that thing. So this happens to just coincidentally give you a quarter inch adapter or a quarter inch plug when it really doesn't want to. It does not give you a 4.4, which is a slight, moderate fucking annoyance for any modern, I gotta get the wipe, hold on. Any modern amplifier that is a balanced amplifier and doesn't include a 4.4, you get points deducted. But I'm also adding back points because fuck you simplicity. So, uh, power balanced 16 ohm, Four and a half watts a channel. Um, unbalanced, 16 ohm, one watt per channel. 16 ohm is real low, like most headphones are going there. 32 ohms, 3.8 watts a channel balanced. And then 300 ohms balanced, 710. And then 600 ohms balanced, 370 milliwatts. That's it, that's all this book is good for. Because it doesn't tell you jack shit. It's like it was written by someone who saw a picture of it and went, I don't know, just give me the specs. I plugged everything into this, and I mean everything. This thing got abused at Capital Audio Fest. It's just, I'm surprised any of its ports even hold plugs, because it was just stick it in and see what goes on. Um, I'll give you the tour of the unit, which is actually going to involve me standing up. Power button, which is a digital power button. You can see it's got a blue LED above it. If we press it once, that blue LED blinks. It's now muted. This has a mute function. It's the most basic of, of headphone amplifiers I've ever had, and it has a mute function. And I'm going to get back to that, because that should be something else. Press it again, it stops blinking. Solid blue. It's on. It's a very small blue, so I'm not offended by it. However, considering the musician Pegasus here has nothing but red LEDs on it, why isn't that red? Oh, because if you hold it down... Then it goes into standby, which takes a long, that was a long press. It's like a three and a half, four second press. Now it's a red LED and it matches the Pegasus. I could do the same thing here. If I hold this down, there you go. Now it's off. 
Red light, red light, great. But then you turn this on, then it's nothing but red lights everywhere else. And you turn this on, and it's blue. So I don't fucking know. So power button, says Andromeda, light, mute function. Four pin XLR output. It says XLR phone. Then you have this plug. It says 6.35 phone. Not on the bottom like that would be, but on the top. So it's like... The labels go bottom, bottom, top, bottom. Don't know why. So we plug this in. It's a very, very thick aluminum fascia. And it's got like a cone shape. So you get, you, you can just go be drunk and be like... And you'll still get it in the hole. Um, balanced output. No 4.4. Quarter inch output. Then a volume knob. The end. And if you notice... I had to take out my white paint pen to add a volume indicator because it had none. It's been a while since I've had one that had none. I've had ones that have bad ones, like this doesn't have an indicator on it because it's a fucking digital knob. You could see a number there. Indicated, indicated, indicated. I filled it with white indicator, little, little tiny slit indicator, but it's there. No indicator at all. Just, woo. It's a dome. It actually is a dome. It's, it's, it's an interesting shape. I don't hate the fact that it's a dome. It gives you like a little area to grab and then it it just feels nicer over your finger again. It's all machined aluminum. But you put it down or you put it all the way up and you couldn't tell. So I immediately, first day, I was like, all right, I don't know, paint marker. Here's an arrow. Now we know where we are. But that's it for the face of the unit. There's no high-low gain. There's no, there's no switching between inputs. You know why? Let me just take a walk around. Come with me behind the scenes. Because this unit has power input, XLR outs for speakers or another amplifier to use as a preamp, balanced inputs, no RCAs, no nothing. That's it. It takes balanced input. It gives you a balanced output that I can control. And I'm going to yell about a thing right now. And then it gives you balanced output in the front and you're done. It's simplicity at work. If I play music, perfect. And I wanna play speakers, I have to turn on the power to the speakers and then the speakers will play. Because it's got that same fucking problem like every other thing where you can't just hit a button and have it go from the headphone section to the back section. Um, in theory, they could make it so when you plug in a headphone, it recognizes that, but they don't ever do that with XLRs. And I kind of don't like that, because then if you unplug your headphones and your volume's up, then your speakers explode. That's my big problem, is that they've included a digital power button that you can press to make the light flash to put it in mute mode. Well, I, I think I know why they do that. A lot of manufacturers tell you, but before you unplug and plug in a headphone, you should always stop your source, lower your volume all the way down. But no one wants to do that, no one will do that. But if you're unplugging and plugging a headphone, maybe you'll tap the power button to then mute the headphone, and pull it in and out. But if you're gonna give me a relay that mutes it, why it's not instead of doing that, give me a relay that when I press that, it goes front, back, then front again. Because I'm sitting here going, wait, it's got to, it's got to have, I mean, there's no switches, there's no buttons, there's no knobs, but there is this. Very weeby in here today, hold on. I, I, I gotta calm it down, we gotta get something Single like. Single room with three other individuals. One of them was a male and the other two, well, the other two were females. God only knows what they were up to in there. I bet you they all habitually smoked marijuana cigarettes. Um, when you plug in a headphone, and luckily these are the hard to drive, hardest to drive, 800, DT800, 600 ohm, DT880, 600 ohm. It means that when I unmute this and Sublime blasts, it's playing out of speakers and quietly out of the headphones. So it's playing out of both, again. So now I have to come here and I'm using the kilowatt edge, which Zeus will link, to literally toggle the here's the power plug i used to unplugged it in a few reviews but if i just want to turn off the speakers which by the way only use between seven and eight watts for the pair to play music so that's 
Do, never think that if you put your speakers on and you're going to waste your electricity. Eight watts is like one of my basement lights is is that's like seven or nine watts. So you could either have your speak your fluid FX eighties playing at a decent tick, or one light in the basement, an LED light. So I'm pretty impressed by the efficiency of the fluids. I really should have brought that up in the review. I just didn't think that it would be that low. So now we've disabled those speakers by literally fucking unplugging them essentially. And now we're going to concentrate just on this headphone amp. This headphone amp. It sounds good with the DT880 600 ohms. Like this, it's an $869, I think. Hold on, let me see what Linsell's got it for. Uh, 869 dollars giggity. Um, it's an $869, $807 dollar amplifier. So... Even if I'm maxed out on a pure DAC, just feeding straight in with I2S, that's still... I just put this on backwards to look like a jackass. What the fuck just happened? I did. I... Oh my God, cancel my channel. It still sounds good. Like it's not clipping. A lot of times, well, 99%, 100% of the time actually. If you have to plug your headphone in and max out your volume, you need a different amplifier. And I'm gonna maintain that like, I can't change the rules up and say, well, just because you're maxing out doesn't mean it's not perfect. It's not perfect. You you want infinite power for 800, 880, 600 ohms. But if you have them and you're considering this amp, every other headphone on the table here and there's fucking piles of them um, works more normally or flawlessly with it. So I just wanted to give it the impression of the 880, 600 ohm because they don't come off the wall enough. And if I'm doing a dedicated amplifier, it should. But yeah, if I put this to noon, these are at like whisper mode. Whisper mode. Oh, I unplugged it without muting it. Oh, bad man, bad, bad man. Let's let's do the T60 Argons. Now, I just earlier today finished the review of the... Um, well, I finished the first half of the benchmark review. The like $3,000, 100-watt per channel THX amp that had these plugged into it. And made them sound better than any other amplifier I've ever heard, heard it on. So, Devilman Cryberry, Sabbath. So now, these are the hardest to drive balanced headphones I have. And I'm also, I mean, that's the top. That's the maximum. Again, still sounds good. Is it the best I've ever heard it on a single, on a, on a um... A solid state? Oh, I th it's damn close, but I think I'm still going to give it to the benchmark. But I think you're starting to pick up that it's not a massive powerhouse. If you have the hardest to drive headphones, the Musician Andromeda, even though it claims you know, four, four, four and a half watts, that's at 16 ohms. These are 50 ohms. So you got to calculate, well, it's four, then it's three at 32, so it's even less than that. So it's probably like two two and a half watts per channel, which I've already stated many times, these need like um, like fucking six watts a channel to be perfect. So they're good. I would enjoy the hell out of these headphones right now because this amp is a class A and clean. Keep in mind, we're also talking on a pure class A. I don't know if I mentioned that already. And class A with lots of power is hard to get unless you're doing absolutely stupid things or spending tons and tons and tons of money. So I give it credit for being able to push T60R guns at all in pure class A. Be with you. Only to be. So let's get out of the, I'll call mute it. Let's get out of the extreme hard to drive stuff, which literally these are the only two examples I think I have that are just like, all right, can I max this amp out? Yeah, these two, that's it. Let's go to something a little bit more manageable. So I've got the the Great O'Hemp's with the Shippabo headband and the new Dakoni uh, Great O'Pads, which I don't know if these are out yet, but these are literally legit Dakoni pads. And um, we're going to slap these on my head. And we're going to be plugging into the six and a half, I'm sorry, six and three fifths, 6.35 or quarter inch jack, how I like to call it. So I'm American. Um, I'm going to unmute it. Now, keeping in mind that this is not a very powerful single ended output, we got up to about 80, 90%, and it's just... 
the burning desire. You start, now that you're like not maxing out, not with the hardest thing, you start feeling it. You start feeling like, oh, the class A, the warmth, the separation, the terrible Tango and Cash soundtrack. Actually, the soundtrack's epic for an 80s action movie starring Sylvester Stallone and, um, why can't I see the other actor? Who the fuck was it? Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell? Yeah, I think it was Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone. Right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Oh. Hall and Oates, out of touch. We're actually gonna lower that, back that down a little bit to like three o'clock. So now it starts becoming one of the better headphone amps and the reason I brought it to Capital Audio Fest. I mean, it really, it's gonna star as a balance. When I get to this balanced output, and not not this for any of these. Then we're gonna get to some like I'm gonna jizz on it. But it's doing a it does a decent enough job. It's like it's nice that they gave us a quarter inch output, but they only gave it to you because they're nice. Because they said, ah, oh, people are fucking gonna want that, aren't they? Ah. They didn't go as hardcore as the QES reference where it's like, no. Unbalanced? What are you insane? Mamma mia, that's an Italian one. So Mamma Mia. Oh, I didn't mute it again. Sorry, everyone. I'm just going to keep moving things from left to right and stacking them up in front of Saber. Um, do I want to do these first or last? Fuck it. Let's do them first because I missed these. Uh, again, this has a 4.4 .4 Pentagon on the Sendy Peacock, which is like one of my favorite headphones. And I've said in a previous review, in fact, I said it in the bench review, that really the amplification of this doesn't really truly matter as much, but we're going to throw it in there anyway. We'll lower that. I'm gonna hit the mute button, put it through on the adapter there. My words, my words will fail me. Slightly warmer than the benchmark, class A. Not THX, Class A, like legit Class A. Oh. Smooth. The word is smooth. Like, car like caramel cream poured over, uh, 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 I want to say cigarettes, but I'm not going to oh, fuck that. Um, just, it's like ice cream, if ice cream is somehow warm and covered in warm caramel. There's no coldness to this at all. And it's so fucking cleaned. So it's warm yet clean. So that's hard to do with Class A. I mean, it's been hard. I mean, like the, um, where's my baby? Where's my green baby? There, the Rebel Amp up there, which was a single-ended Class A, 500 bucks. It came from Ukraine, and uh, that thing was on this rack forever. And people were like, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I just, it was, it couldn't stand it up. So I just had to move it so I could fit more amps this way. But I mean, I'd use that Rebel Amp from now until the day I die but it's only one watt per channel. And this balanced class A at, you know, three at 32 ohms is three watts per channel. And that tripling of power matters. And when you can push big old fucking planars like this, again, I'm at three o'clock. Yeah, no. That's that's why you buy this amplifier. Mute it, mute it, because I, I love I, this. Is too, they're too good. I'm gonna actually leave the adapter in there, and let's move over to let's just get these out of the way. Because this is another pair of headphones that I'm about to do the review of soon, and I'm gonna state that amplification really, just as long as it's good, will be fine. Like they don't care that you're not using like a world class class A amplifier. Basically, still locked at three o'clock, by the way, the volume. Oh. Uh, the impact, like the, the, the low end, uh, by the way, having the mute button there is really convenient for them doing reviews, that's amazing. But the low, the low end impact and the, like the carryover, I want to call it carryover, I know that's not even a thing, 
But like, it feels like the bass hits and it just doesn't hit and go dead. It feels like it hits and sort of stays there. It kind of sounds a little bit like the way a tube handles low end, but it's not because I literally compared this amplifier to the tubes and it doesn't sound like that. So, rings out forever. Reptile from Nine Inch Nails. I, I want to just, it's one of those headphone amplifiers that you hear something on and go, yeah, but is it really that much better? And then you plug it into another amplifier. Let's actually, let's plug it into another amplifier. Where's my volume at? Are we on high gain? That's too many gains. Crap, throwing my A90 behind my rack. I'm fucked. There. <sighs> every day, every day, all day better. Be I enjoy the sound of this more than the A90. Do I enjoy it more than I like the Singer? Let's do another thing. Hold on. A little more width than the Singer, because the Singer is biased Class A, not fully Class A. The Singer is like it's an A B that sort of leans A pretty hard, and I fucking love my Singer. That's why it's there. But this is pure Class A, and I can fucking tell. I can tell the difference between that. It's not as wide as the gap between the A90 and this, but the Singer in this, there's still something in this that's eking it out. Moving on to the next thing. By the way, link to the Grove made stand, which makes this a whole lot easier because all these musician devices are here to destroy my desk. If I pick it up without giving it too many fingerprints and it weighs a lot. <laughs> it's got three legs, three with silicone points. And it's like, oh Jesus. And I love the um, geometry of the fascia also. It makes it less boring. I mean, I'm all about like, I've got so much shit, make it less boring. This makes it less boring and looks more high end. And the three legs means it won't sit weird. Oh. Except when you put it on a soft table and it pokes into the table. Um, we'll go, oh, I can plug this in. So this is my 300 ohm pair of HD 600s. And if we go into the quarter inch, and since we have the uh, heart audio cables, I can, I'm gonna be able to do this and switch the exact headphone back and forth. So let's see, how does the 600s on quarter inch sound? Okay, all the way up is too loud. 330, switching off Nine Inch Nails. Helsing OST, great. Interstellar OST, obviously amazing. Hard to switch back and forth though, because it changes so much. Jazz for Japan, here you go. Nearly at the top, through the quarter inch. Ray Brown. Actually, it's Jazz for Japan. I don't know who's it. This is Jazz for Japan's So What. That's. Mm, oh, God, lower it. Because we have a much more powerful. Actually, it's not much more powerful out of the balance. Compa like, literally just comparing it here. I went from like 4 o'clock to 3 o'clock to be the same volume. But. I can tell you off the bat, I want to listen to it balanced. The width just width changes. It's a little bit quieter. Yeah, no. You want to run this amp balanced. You want to run things in this amp balanced. If you happen to have only a quarter inch, so be it. But if you have a majority of, ampl of your amplifiers, all these amplifiers, if a majority of your headphones are balanced or balanceable, and you pick one of these up, for fuck's sake, run it balanced. And you don't need it out of the Pegasus R2R, it just happens to be one of the DACs I trust. And now I have fucking three of them, so there you go. Oh, now I have three, I have two matching Pegasus. Then I could do that thing where I split the spit if signal and I have left channel on one and right channel on the other. Oh. Oh my fucking god, yes. I 
if the if the benchmark solid state THX is the best I've ever heard the HC600s on a solid state, this is a damn close second. So let's unplug this now in perpetuity for the hardest to amplify fucking headphones that I that I own. And they're not hard to amplify in like they require a lot of power. They're hard to amplify in like they're fucking snotty bitches. These are the Paris Hilton of headphones. You have green M&Ms? Oh my god, this place sucks. That's that's these. These the TH99s, I love them. I love them. I love the way when they, when they are on point, they are on point. But when they go into an amplifier they don't like, you fucking know it. Because you want to choke them. And finally, I had fun that we could run at noon. Super easy to drive. Take them to one o'clock. One o'clock. Symbols are playing right now, and I don't feel like gouging my eyes out. That's the number one thing you listen to with 900s or 909s on an amplifier. Is like, how are the highs? Do you want to die? No? Okay, you're working way, way towards good. Oh. Rodrigo and Gabriella, 1111, which should be a song that Linsoul licenses to have their 1111 sale, but they don't. These are the wheelhouse. This pair of headphones is the wheelhouse for the musician Andromeda. Not super hard to drive, can appreciate a solid, clean Class A, and can be run balanced. This is when everyone's going to run and buy this, because as soon as you have... As soon as you can match those criteria, where you have a balanced DAC, and you have balanceable headphones, and you want a balanced amplifier that has very simple controls, there's no gain settings, it just is. In fact, one of the bullet points is that they have the shortest, I, I don't, can't take this apart, because I literally don't fucking know how. It's gotta come off like the bottom, and it lifts up. But um, they claim to have like the shortest possible connections between everything. Like, instead of having it like loop around and go, it's like, boom, straight lines, fucking back, ass to mouth. It's ass to mouth as short as possible. They don't want to get in the way of it. The shorter you make the signal pass, the less you have a chance of things interfering. So, plus their power supply is like a third gen. Let me read the actual blurb for what their power supply claims to be because it's kind of hilarious. Um, pure class A, the O type single crystal copper transformer. Optimized Impro, the power supply. Uh, blah, blah, can use a higher dynamic range and sound performance enough to match any earphone, which who the hell calls them earphones. Uses the same good technology of Pegasus DAC. Power supply, voltage, automatic switching. Fast recovery of low, ultra low power linear. Also, I think there's a, it's either a typo or this, or there's headphones I don't know about. Twice, not once, but twice. It says it can handle um, impedance between 150 which makes no sense considering that the uh, the book literally goes down to 16. Between 150 and 6,000 ohms. What? I think I think there's an extra zero on both of those. 15 to 600 seems a little bit more reasonable than 150 to 6,000. So yeah. But then they say 6,000 again. Undistorted power up to a 6,000 load. Meeting the needs of difficult to drive headphones. So it's like, mm, I'll message Linsaw and be like, can you straighten those out? Because that doesn't make sense. Yeah, up here it says drive 150 to 600 ohm. So maybe the ohm turned into a zero. But then why is it still 150? This thing could do way better than that. I had IEMs plugged into this. I had the Dunu Zens, which are my stethoscope to the headphone amp world on it when I had it at uh, Capital Audio Fest. And literally you get to like here and you rub it back and forth and you could just hear it going you actually hear the volume knob pot you hear the noise in the pot and it's it's inaudible on like even these headphones which are super fucking easy to drive but there's no it's this is the darkest class a i've heard and it is legit class a it is much like the gsx mini where the gsx mini is class a gsx mini probably has more power than this um, at higher ranges, but when I plug the Dunu Zens, which are not here because it's fucking my got enough on my table. But when I plug the Dunu Zens into it, and I listen to it, I heard nothing. And when I plug the Dunu Zens into the fucking GSX Mini, and I turn the volume knob up, it sounded like a rain machine. It was like shh, holy fuck. 
So if you're looking for a clean Class A, make sure my volume is down in the correct spot. I just turned it up. Oof. I almost want to sound demo this amp. I, I've I've had requests for that, but I just like I can't keep doing sound demos for every piece of gear I get. But I would love to show the difference between what this sounds like on this and what this sounds like on that. Or what this sounds like on that. Or what this sounds like on that. Or what this sounds like on that. Um, under a grand, I don't have to put a gemstone on the title. Thank God. I'm tired of getting everything that I get. It's like, oh, four gemstones in the title. Four, four gemstones in the title. The, the amp is three gemstones in the title. Um, you're, two, you're nearly two gemstones. You're nearly two gemstones. I miss doing the cheap stuff that's great, and, and everyone complains sometimes that I get like, oh, you just get shitty topping and Leap and Lox G stuff and SMSL. That's kind of like, other than JDS Labs, which has comes out with one product a goddamn, if we're lucky, a year. Then you got shit, which comes out with a bunch of stuff all at once, and then I review it all, and then it's done. And then, uh... To some extent, uh, Mayflower Electronics. Like those are the three American ones that make the cheaper stuff. But the other places, Topic, SMSL, and fucking Lakshi, are pushing out a bunch of solid gear. Musician is Chinese, obviously. And this is a fucking piece of art. Like the actual, like the way that the angles work with the light and everything. Like someone took care in making this feel. Like, did you, did you notice? Oh, fuck. Like the cutout in the back and how it doesn't need to have that. But it does, and it weighs like 11 pounds. It's not going to break the uh, Grove Mate thing, but it fucking might. It might break your desk if you drop it wrong. If you have a glass desk, highly recommend putting down like a doormat before you put this thing on top of it. Because if you hit the corner on there, it's going to shatter. Like that is a quality feeling, touching, sounding piece of equipment for $869. So, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Would I? Re what would I replace Honestly, it should go in the rack. It's one of those, like, I would almost take the Singzer out at that point. <sighs> I can't. I can't make this. I fuck these decisions. I hate making decisions. Anyway, I'm done. I've either inspired you to think about saving up for this son of a bitch or not. And that's, that's, that's what I do. I, I, it doesn't matter if you spend your dollars here or somewhere else. It's just... I'm telling you about this. I'm in a little bit of love. I'm, I'm enough for that. That that wallpaper, which is available down in the description, was chosen because of this. I need you to pay attention. Pay attention. Would it look better in silver? Maybe. I prefer the original musician like green, but they don't make them in that color anymore, which is why that one's there, because it looks cool. By the way, this musician, Pegasus Artois, is coming off of this scable only to feed... The Wild Eleven Topaz. That's its only job. Actually, do I have the RCAs coming out of there and doing something? They might. But yeah. Um, links to this on Linsol. Links to that on Linsol. I fucking guess I'll link to every single headphone I use and the Dunu Zens. Don't forget the Dunu Zens Zios. Wallpaper. Description. Patreon subscribe so to see reviews early. I got a little left uh, behind on the holidays and the pastos in town, so sorry about that to my patrons. You will be getting an influx of videos in the next coming few days. So uh, Patreon subscribe to see reviews early, participate in yard sales, access to the sound demo oasis where sound demos that have disappeared are there, and modern sound demos are all available for a lossless download. You can hear the quality of it losslessly. The $10 patronage chat uh, gets you into a private telegram with me and uh, anybody who could answer your questions. You can ask me questions there. It's the only way really to ask me questions is to get into the $10 chat, unless you get real lucky and I see your comment on YouTube. Um, you also get into the Swap Meet channel, which is where if you want to buy and sell things to just people who have been vetted by like a $10 paywall, that's a great place for it. You're in that for life, by the way. If you join the $10 chat, you get into the swap me forever because I'm too lazy to fucking police it. So there you go. Um, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides Forum are finally getting sponsors. Um, I believe we have Periopt is going to do a few months and Dakoni is going to do a few months of sponsorship. If you're an audio company or you think there's an audio company that should sponsor Hi-Fi Guides because we've sent you there and helped us, please contact them and tell them to contact us. I don't know how they can do that yet. I should have put an ad thing 
That reminds me, put a place for people to say, who want to advertise on high We're just not going to do stupid cables. I won't do stupid cables. Cables that claim that they're going to do something that I know they're not going to do because I own the site. Well, DMS and I own the site. And I will not allow it. So um, check out HiFiGuides.com, a place where Zeos doesn't allow some shit that's shit. Um, other than that, we're good to go, right? I'll see you in two more days for another review. Hope you enjoy Christmas, which is coming up, presumably. Don't think I made that many videos. I could push this to 2022, but goodbye. 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 Goodbye.